So, say there's an agent out there watching and they're not a top producer. What are some of the top things that you've noticed that are in common amongst the top producers that you see that you can share that a new agent, a struggling agent that wants to be a top producer can learn from so that they can too become a top producer? I got a secret. Okay, good. Good. I love it. I like it. Here's a secret. Agents may not know this, Mm. but here's a secret that they should know. Agents, I got my good buddy, Mr. Andy Daster, the president of North American Life Friends. As, a, 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 and Andy, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, Cody. Good to see you, man. You too, man. Thank you so much for your time for being on here. Yeah. Uh, I would love, I'd love for you to take a second and share your story with those that are watching because Andy has been around the industry for for a couple days, yeah. uh, knows a lot, and is focused on helping a lot of agents, and definitely has a story. Uh, and a song to sing. So won't you share that with us right now? You know, I'll be brief about me. I've been doing this now for 30 years. It's all I've ever done right out of college, got into the insurance business and have focused almost entirely on health insurance and individual life insurance throughout that time. Um, I worked 20 years working for an insurance company or several insurance companies. And then last, you know, eight or 10 years or so have been uh, running an independent FMO to help other agents. And, you know, you're really right. Kona. The idea was I want to try to share with everybody what I've learned over 30 years. I realize a lot of your audience may not have been doing this for 30. Oh. So um, if there is any way I can accelerate their learning curve and shortcut from the three years they've been doing this from the 30 years that I've been doing it, then I've accomplished what I was hoping to accomplish today. Exactly, which is awesome, buddy. And and you've been you've been doing this as long as I've been alive. So we've got something in common there. Yeah, Thanks, Cody. Cool. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, from an experience standpoint, though, I mean, if we were to if we were to if we were to rewind back thirty years ago, um, I think you said you were twenty or you were in college. You were right around there. Yep. What, walk me through that. Like, how did you start? What were you selling? What did it look like? What were some of the struggles you you identified and noticed? And and what are some 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 things we can focus on that can help that agent that maybe is in the position that you were 30 years ago. You know, it's funny because 30 years ago I was working at United Healthcare. It, was, it used to be called Golden Rule. If your folks yeah, yeah, yeah. remember that. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So it was yeah. called Golden Rule. And uh, now it's United Health One. And I was literally just selling health insurance exclusively for United Healthcare. Back in those days, get this, long term major medical. Yeah, there was major medical that you could buy from an insurance company that you didn't have to keep renewing. It just kept going. Uh, there was no Obamacare. There was there was short term medical. In fact, if you look at the short term medical uh, that's out there today, it's exactly the same product as what we were selling 30 years ago. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so that was around uh, long term major medical. And then I also did things like Medicare supplement a little bit of life insurance, a little bit of annuities. I had a real nice mix of things. Since that time, when United has really sort of taken it over, you know, United tried to do Obamacare and that didn't turn out so good. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but they still are doing a lot of the same stuff today that they did 30 years ago when I was knocking on doors selling health insurance back at that time. I love it. And and when you you started um, and you were selling health insurance, what was your way of getting in front of people? How did you do that? How did you prospect? Well, it's interesting. Back in those days, it was almost all working with non-insurance, uh, sorry, non-health insurance agents, PNC agents, um, life agents, um, uh, CPAs, even okay. all kinds of different professionals that didn't really want to get their hands dirty. The interesting thing is, if an agent were to ask me what I should do today, I'd actually tell them the same thing: <laughs> go network with PNC agents. Go network with life agents, go network with large group agents, go network with CPAs, attorneys, providers. Um, It's a great, great source of prospects that will just call you. You don't have to keep asking, badgering people, build a network. And I'll tell you, it will serve you well for a long time if you build that network. The problem with it, though, is so many agents want instant gratification. They want to, you know, get a prospect right now. And yes. networking doesn't really do that. It doesn't give you that immediate gratification. But over the long term, 
it will absolutely serve you well and it will be the best possible lead source. People will just call you. And the thing I really like about it, I won't keep talking about it, the thing I really like about it is when the prospects call you, number one, love that, yeah. but number two, they know who you are and they know what you do. Somebody mm -hmm. else has told them, oh, by the way, you need to call this guy. He can help you with whatever this insurance problem is that you have. So they already have the expectation that you're a problem solver because somebody else told them that you were. Yes. The best way to develop prospects doesn't really cost a lot. It's just a lot of elbow grease, and unfortunately, yeah. it takes some time. It doesn't it just doesn't happen fast. That's awesome. Uh, how how was how how much money did you make your first year? Do you remember? Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is not going to be relevant because of the time difference of thirty years, sure. but it's about fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, okay. You know what? And when and, and let's just say it's you know, that's probably I don't know maybe forty five now or something like that. But but I think that's the reason I asked that. There's a there's a lot of agents that um, maybe get off to a slow start. Um, they make money. They do okay. They do well, right? Yep. What whatever that was time period wise. Yep. However, um, getting over the hump into where um fast forward in your career you've been a lot of places you've done a lot of things you have a ton of experience you're helping agents all over the country now and you really have found um what you enjoy doing and you know now you make probably a heck of a lot of money uh, more money than when you started i sure do and, and so if i was 30 years ago and i look back and say well, what gave me the foundation to be still in this business 30 years later which by the way most of the people I knew back at that time, they're not in the business anymore. Exactly. But, but I stuck through it. And, uh, and yeah, yeah I, I certainly doing north of $15,000 today. I'm, yep. I'm pleased to, to tell you. Barely, you know, right? 15 back then, it's probably 30, 35, you know, today. Yeah, not great. And good news is I live with my mother, so <laughs> I was able to save some on costs, which, by the way, is not that uncommon for new agents today. They no. have some other source of income or somebody else paying the bills in order to help make that transition. You know, Cody, I hear you talking all the time about how you got to persevere and you got to get over that hump and it yes. takes time. I wish I could say, yeah, I know this thing that will make it go from two years down to two months and then all of a sudden everybody's got it. But yeah, it just, it doesn't work that way. Certainly not um, in this business. But um, the, the two things I think that I really benefited from and I try to really utilize that same thinking even today is I realize that agents need a lot of training and I really feel like at the end of the day the thing that probably makes me different from any other FMO out there is that I am a producer who knows how to produce and has done it for a long time and spends all day every day thinking about how to help other agents learn what I've learned huge this is just one example but it's not the only one it's every single day training 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 and and if if you're not associated with my organization, I highly recommend you find one that is as committed to training as I am. It doesn't mm. have to be me, but sure. trying to figure this out on your own, and that's just too tough to do. Now, yeah, Cody, you, you you provide so many great resources to, to help agents get training. You gotta have people that you can count on that can provide and share uh, what they've learned. Um, without that, you don't have a lot. The second thing, and I know Cody, you and I also um, see eye to eye on this, is you got to have a way to generate prospects. The um, and I heard you say this on um, on one of your previous videos. The number one reason agents don't make it is they don't see enough people. Right. I'm sorry if I just stole your quote, but it's absolutely true. Dude, totally. It, you could be the most ill-informed agent out there, yes. but if you have a large number of prospects, you're still going to make it. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. You could be the smartest, best trained, most sophisticated advisor on the planet, and you yeah. will fail if you don't see enough people. That's right. There just is no substitute for it. And you know, one of the things Cody, you and I talked about is. Um, you know, how do you get to those really, really big income levels? I wish I could tell you it was some fancy um, plan on how to get to those 100, 200, 300, 500,000. You know what it is? 
Yes. Seeing enough people. In fact, your big income earners will tell you that they can't keep up. Mm. Now, for someone who's only two years in the business, they're probably thinking, man, I can't even imagine a scenario where I can't keep up with all the prospects. Exactly. But believe it or not, that happens, and that happens a lot to your superstar producers. That's their key. They know how to efficiently talk to as many people as they possibly can, and they will tell you, I can't keep up. The phone rings too much. I'm working nights. I'm working weekends. because Not because I'm pushing harder than the next guy. The phone won't stop ringing. That's awesome. I, I Yeah, there's a lot of agents that, you're right, they can't even fathom right. that being possible. But how amazing is it that as long as you don't quit along the way, yep. life is going to get really good. Exactly like, right. Like that that's what we know about the industry. That's how amazing this industry is. So how do you get those prospects? Okay, let's not talk about the five hundred thousand dollar producer, because you know it, it, for somebody who's only been in the business a few years, they probably look at that and say, I can't even fathom that. Yes. So let's talk about the producer that's got a couple of years in the business. Mm -hmm. I would argue that what they need to do is they're gonna need to um <laughs> sorry. Um, they're going to need to um, find a way to partner with somebody that can help them with that. So if I was starting brand new, I'll tell you what I'd do. I would either find uh, an organization that is dedicated to helping newer agents find prospects, training yep. them, helping them either get prospects or paying for prospects, You know, work at a call center, work at an insurance company like I did. Find a place that will give you the training that you're going to need and will help you find not only prospects, but prospects that you like working. That's another, I think, challenge that some agents have. They'll say, yeah, I've got leads, but man, I don't want to call them. I don't want to, I hate the, you know, I hate being told this or that. I go, you got the wrong lead. You got to be looking forward to talking to people. And if you're miserable, because you got the wrong lead source, you got to go find somebody that can provide you a lead source that you like. It's never going to work if you fear the phone, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what agents do. They look at that phone, they're looking at it, oh, man, I don't want to pick it up, and I don't want to talk to these people. Yeah, you got to have a lead source that you like. Yes, you do, man. You're absolutely right. That's something you got to do. Um, for you, it seems like you were just someone that embodied, because when I think about, uh, when I think about Andy, I'm like, okay, he, 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 he didn't quit. He persevered. He got better over time. He made yeah. more money over time. And and you deep down want to help people. Like the first time we spoke on the phone when I was trapped, I think I believe I think I was driving to Rolla, Missouri to see my in-laws. And it was like last summer, maybe. And I'm like, man, uh, this dude gets it. This dude cares about people. This dude likes and, and does everything he can to, to help people. And he knows a ton about the industry. And I remember getting off the phone and I'm like, that's just a good dude. You know, like you get off the phone and you're like, and, and you think this is someone I want to start to really get to know. Is that someone, is, is that something that because of the way you were raised or you just always been that way? Like how has Andy become the good dude that Andy is today? Where's that, where's that come from? I, I don't know that I have a great answer, but you definitely have, um, you definitely got me right. I, when I was, um, producing when I am producing is the same thing when I work with agents. I never think about money, mm. ever. I never think, is this going to make me money? Is this going to make me more money? I never do that. I am always thinking about how to help people. Yeah. Whether it's a consumer that I'm trying to help, they got a problem and I'm trying to solve it. And certainly every day, the same thing with agents. I'm only thinking every day, how can I help more agents? How can I help them accomplish their objectives. And I love the success stories. Um, in fact, one of the things that we're gonna do at 8%, we're so excited about this summer, is I'm going to be sharing with your, um, with your audience success stories. And I'm not just gonna talk about them, I'm going to bring them. And mm. I'm gonna let them talk about how, how they got the kinds of things that they needed in order to be successful. And that doesn't mean just getting started. Maybe it was just, hey, I wanted to get to the next level and I just couldn't figure out how to get over the hump. That's a lot of what we do. Yeah. Sometimes it was just, you know, I just wanted to be comfortable. I, w I didn't want to work 
to the point where I was struggling. I just wanted to have good things happen in my family, those I love. Uh, you're going to see those at 8%. And, and we're proud of the fact that people view the things that we do as making their lives better. If I can help more agents make their lives better, then that's what keeps me going. And you're exactly right when we were talking about that. That's, I think that's the kind of thing I was telling you about, and I still think that every day. And yeah, you know what? Money will come. You know, it'll be there. And if you know, you're an agent and, and you're thinking, how do I make more money? How do I make more money? You're asking the wrong question. The question right. is, how do I help more, help more people? That's what people who make money do. They help people. They help people with their problems. And you'll find that it is constantly feeding itself. As soon as people know you as the guy that helps people, everybody wants to have to talk to you. Whether you're an agent or you're an FMO, it's the same thing. People know. And just like you know, you were saying, I, I really do believe it. I don't never think about money. I only think about how I can help people. Money will be there. It's not right. going anywhere. It'll be there. That's right. I love that, man. I love that. When I because when I first started on YouTube, I remember not really doing anything monetarily to monetize at all for the first thirteen months. You know, it's like it, it, it. You're right. You do enough good in the world, and the money will come. Yeah, you know, if you would have just done YouTube for the purposes of making a buck, well, you wouldn't have made it thirteen days, much less thirteen months. You just say, okay, well, this is put money in my pot. Yeah, now your intent was to try to communicate. Your intent was to try to help. Your intent, yes. I can tell it when I'm watching your videos. As I mentioned, I've been watching a bunch of them. I really enjoyed them. And, um, you got a great message. And uh, unfortunately, you're kind of out there on an island. There's not a lot of Cody's out there. So if, uh, if I'm an agent, I, I would go onto Cody's YouTube channel and watch every single video you have the time to watch. And, and um, it, it, if you've got five minutes, go watch a Cody video. I mean, you will benefit, and uh, I, I don't get paid to say that, uh, Cody. I just no. I, the reason I want to help you is because I know you're helping agents. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you, you bring up you, you kind of one of the things I wanted to pivot to based on what you just said is yeah. um, finding a mentor in this business, finding someone that you can rely on, that you can learn from, that you can lean on, uh, is so much more important than people think. And I know it's something that you talk about and believe as well. Yeah, you know, it, not only do I talk about and believe it, but we do that every day. Our organization is made up of producers. And it is not only um, me and I still sell, I still talk to consumers every day, keeps me sharp. Yeah. But everybody, all of our sales managers, sales directors, everybody involved in our organization are top producers. And believe it or not, they want to share with others. And let me explain one of the ways that they do it. I believe we may be the only FMO in the country that has their agent force be a community. We have a community mm. of hundreds, maybe thousands of agents that are all with our organization. Nobody knows about this because nobody else can see this. But we have a closed group on Facebook and it is an incredibly powerful group hundreds thousands of our agents are on there and they're all helping each other every day wow. and the beauty of it is i'm a member of so many other facebook groups and i see some poor agent ask a question and they'll get 20 responses and unfortunately 17 of them are wrong yeah. and i'm just looking at that you know series of comments i'm like oh my gosh this is wrong this is wrong oh my gosh please don't do that please don't do that yeah but on our group it is moderated by experts only. Our top producers are the ones who comment. Our top mm. producers are the ones who are telling you this is how this works, or here's a phone number for the head of claims, or here's how this benefit works, or here's how underwriting works. I just don't know of any other organization where top producers are that freely willing to share their best practices, whether it's sales, products, carriers, uh, partners, vendors, they share everything and nobody has any qualms like, am I helping my competitor? They mm. never talk that way. They never think that way. They just want to be a part of the community. And you might say, you know, how did I get them to do that? And the answer is I did. I've never asked them to do it. I've never intended that they would do it. 
we've just built an organization of like-minded people that want to help others. It, awesome. it, I guess maybe it's kind of rubbed off on everybody that you know we're we're all better off helping each other. There's no benefit to hoarding all the good information and uh, and not sharing it with those that are really craving it. I, I think it's something really different and unique that you just won't find in a lot of other places. So true, man. That is is that uh is that also something that happens? I know you guys do some events as well. Um, yep. Is that something that really happens a lot at events as well? Because I'm I'm a big believer in the power of getting people together to learn. So you're exactly right, Cody. We were actually going to have you be our keynote speaker at our last event last summer, but uh, as you know, it uh, didn't go so good because of the That's pandemic. True. So we didn't have ours, and I don't think we're going to have ours this year either. But there's no question that if you ask, first of all, all of our top producers come in for this event, all on their own dime. Wow. Even though you think they've already got it figured out, they're already making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why would they come? What do mm. they stand to gain? And every one of them says the same thing because I'm learning from others. I still want to learn. That's of course what top producers do, right? They're constantly learning. They, yeah. you, you should never think of learning as having some sort of a, uh, of an ending. There's no such thing. You no. stop learning, you're dead or retired or whatever. That's right. That's um, right. So they, they crave the learning. They love the interaction. They like being a part of that community of other producers that are like-minded. Yep, the event is the same thing. Unfortunately, the pandemic has sort of handcuffed us a little bit, but, uh, but make no mistake, it, the, 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 what you're alluding to is, is no different, whether it's virtual or whether it's, uh, whether it's live. That's huge. It's, it's, say there's an agent out there watching um, and they're not a top producer. What are some of the top things that you've noticed that are in common amongst the top producers that you see that you can share that a new agent, a struggling agent that wants to be a top producer can learn from so that they can too become a top producer? I got a secret. Okay, good. Good. I love it. I like it. There's a secret. And you agents may not know this, Mm. but here's a secret that they should know. When they register for a training webinar, they get on my radar. The more that they register and attend training webinars, the higher they get on my radar. Mm. The more that I'm wanting to do for them, the more that I'm wanting to help them, the more that they are um, somebody that we want to develop. Because the thing that top producers have in common is the desire to learn. We had, a, a give you an example, we had um, a series of webinars this last summer. Um, and uh, Um, They were largely repeats. I mean, largely meaning similar sort of concepts and just sort of reiterating them and looking at them from some different perspectives. And I'm looking at the list of people who registered. And guess what? Our top producers went to every one of them. (laughs) Top producers are still trying to learn. And they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I went and I listened again and I learned something additional. And then I learned again and I learned more. But the newer people that I see attending webinars over and over again, those are the guys and gals that I'm keeping an eye out for, because that tells me they're wanting to learn. And if they want to learn, I want to invest in them. Mm. Most agents probably think when they sign up for a webinar that nobody really notices. Okay, I'm just signing up for a webinar. I'm one of, you know, whatever, hundreds of agents that are signing up for this webinar. Yeah. But trust me, I'm watching. I want to see who wants to learn because I can work with that agent. That's right. What I can't work with is an agent who says, just hand it to me. Mm. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to make an investment in my business in terms of, in terms of learning. I just want somebody to hand it to me on a silver platter. Gosh. I can't do anything with that person. But somebody who's attending webinars and trying to learn, I can help them get from wherever they are at to the next level and then to the next level after that. Yeah, that's such a massive uh, secret to, to success as well, if you think about it, because um, the well, what I've noticed as well is the top people, they show up consistently. They, sh- they show up when they don't want to. They show up anyway. They don't make excuses, right? They just show up. And even as simple, like, like a free webinar, the barrier to entry is so low. Right. 
And exactly. still, still people will register and not even attend. Yep. And then we wonder why so many insurance agents fail. You just learned from That's one it. of the from one of the top dudes in this industry that all you got to do is show up and That's your right. chance of success increase. Incredible. That's it. I know that sounds so overly simplistic, but that's how I know who actually believes that, who actually is showing up. I just got to look at the webinar registration list and I say, hey, this is the third time I've mm. seen this agent participate in this. I don't see production. We got to work with this agent. We got to help them. They're wanting to learn. They're wanting to get it figured out. That's huge. I, yep. I, I, I know exactly what we're going to title this video now based on what you just said. That's huge. That's good, man. That's so good. I, that was, that was the, uh, that if, if, and also there's gonna be a lot of agents that watch this that don't make it the 25 minutes that we've been on. And this was the best part because All I'm right. telling well, like you, that. I see so many people that, that say they're going to do something and they don't do it. Yeah. They say they're going to jump on the free webinar and they don't like yeah. we have a 30, about a 30, uh, 4% attendance rate on our free webinars. Wow. And we'll have a thousand agents register yep. and about 340 show up. That is the problem with our industry. It, uh, it's like, it's not, know. it's not that difficult to get over the hump and succeed. All you have to do is show up. And you know, the 76%, whatever, 66% that didn't show up really missed out. Yep. But I want to know who the 34% that did show up. That's right. Those are the guys that can be worked with guys and gals. Um, those are the people that want to learn and those are the people you and I can help. That's right. Can't really help you if you don't show up. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, well, well tell, tell me a little bit about, um, North American life plans. You, you guys, what you do, um, uh, what you do for agents and, and, um, a couple more questions before we wrap up. Sure. Well, so first of all, I want to say we may be one of the last true independent insurance marketing organizations out there. You know, there's so many companies that are getting bought up and rolled up in this whole consolidation. We are not for sale. We are an independent organization. I was named president of the company on January 1st. I got, you know, 20 years ahead of me. And then we have a whole succession plan as to how that's going to happen. And I think that's important because you want to make sure that you're working with an organization that you could be with for the long term, especially if you've only been in it a couple of years. You, you want to know what the future is. Uh, right. The second thing is, is while we are big and we are growing fast, at the same time, I still kind of think of us as a boutique. Mm. You know, we do health insurance and we do financial products like life insurance and annuities and Medicare and small group, but I don't ever want to lose the fact that we're a boutique because that's what keeps us tight in a community. And as soon as we kind of get too big, I always worry that, we have lost that personal touch and, and the genuine desire to try to help agents. So true. Um, uh, the third thing, and we haven't really mentioned it, and I know uh, they're going to kill me for not mentioning it, is we are leading the interest of the industry on making the transformation to virtual marketing. Mm. If agents are still trying to market the old fashioned way, trying to knock on doors or trying to you know, do seminars. All of those are great. And maybe they may come back, but you have got to figure out how to do digital marketing and virtual marketing. And we are leading the industry and in helping agents figure out how that is. You've got to be able to sell over the phone, enroll electronically, and virtual market. Last but not least, uh, two that. other things. Uh, second to last thing is, if you're currently in an organization where you feel like you've sort of hit the ceiling, for whatever reason, all of our top producers came from some place where they felt like they hit a ceiling mm. and found that pathway to independence and making that really big money. That's one of the things we specialize in. Last but not least, because we have sort of that commonality, this organization really is a community of agents, community of producers that all want to help each other. Not something you're really going to find in a lot of places. There's a lot of great people in this business that I love dearly, but if you're looking for hundreds of mentors that actually know what they're talking about and we're willing to take the time to help you, talk to you, work with you on social media, uh, that's that's who we are. Mm, that's amazing. What's some of the top t takeaways if someone's wanting to transition to being 100% virtual nowadays and, and they've been doing it the old-fashioned way? 
So certainly you've got to learn how to do digital marketing. I mean, there's just no way around it. And, you know, uh, digital marketing has so many different um, ways to go about it. But one of the things that um, is really simple is Facebook. Everybody's on it now. It's so simple and easy. You just have to learn some basic steps to do some simple Facebook marketing. And you can do it for super cheap. Um, sometimes even not spend anything at all and just use some elbow grease. So you got to be able to do that. The second thing I would say, though, I think sometimes agents think of virtual marketing as only being social media or search engine optimization and things like that. But that's still too narrow to me. To me, networking mm. is a virtual marketing method. I can call PNC agents. I can ask a friend. I can talk to people and I don't have to physically be in front of them or go buy lunch or true. Any of those things. You can network. That's still virtual marketing. And as we talked about at the onset of this program, I don't know that that will provide you instant gratifications in terms of leads, but over the long term, it will provide you the best prospects that convert at the highest rate. Spend the time to build your network, build out referral bases. It takes time, but networking is a way to virtually market without having to do Facebook or search engine optimization. That takes even longer because it takes yep. some time to get it figured out. But we are leading the industry in helping agents figure that out. We um, have um, one of the things uh, I was telling somebody, our December of this past year, we were up 70% over the December of the prior year. And of an organization of our size to be growing at that clip, that's just, man, that's ridiculous. Um, so, you know, somebody was asking me, did the pandemic affect you? Well, you know, obviously not very much. Uh, 70% is a pretty healthy number. But I would argue that part of the reason that we have done so well is, be and I talked to other guys who were telling me they really struggled through the pandemic, is because we were in front of it. We were showing agents how to do things over the phone, how to enroll people electronically, how to do digital marketing. We've been in front of this for a while. None of this took us by surprise. It probably accelerated a few things like it probably did for a lot of others. Uh, a good example is this, you know, I've never done a YouTube uh, interview with Cody Askin. So, you know, first time for anything That's or right. everything. But, um, but our agents didn't get surprised. They didn't get um, um, uh, hand strapped or, uh, you know, they, they didn't get handcuffed from the pandemic. They were prepared and they were ready to go yeah. and didn't really affect them. Actually, if anything, it might have helped them because 70% is a ridiculous amount of growth year over year for a company of our size. I, I think they probably capitalized on other agents sitting back going, I don't know what to do. Um, or the agents that I've heard even didn't say they didn't know what to do. They said, I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. Those guys who said they were going to wait, wait until it all goes back to the way it was before, our agents took their customers <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's so sad too, because that was such a such a moment, in a positive way. It was such a moment for opportunity to advance, to expand. That's right. Yeah. Exactly what we did. We looked at it as an opportunity. We were locked and loaded, and, and we took advantage of the opportunity. I love it. What What's some final tips for for an agent that uh, uh, needs to take it to that next level and really expand in twenty twenty one? I'll just reemphasize what I'd said earlier. Get all the training that you can from every source that you find credible and reliable. Spend the time you will turn into a top producer by learning. However, um. you can be the smartest guy out there. You've got to have your prospect bucket full. That's right. Find a way to do that. Partner up, work with a carrier, work with a IMO, work with a call center, do whatever you got to do to be overwhelmed with leads and prospects. Those two things, it's really pretty simple. Do it, not do it. If you're uh, willing to do it, I'm willing to help you. I'll fund all of it, but uh, That's huge. you gotta take those steps. That's huge, man. Show up, so difficult, right? Be, will be, be willing to learn and yeah. fill the bucket with tons of people to see. That's incredible. Um, if, 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 they've, if someone's loved this, they're like, man, I like this Andy dude. Uh, how do they get in touch with you? How do they learn more and how do they, uh, uh, reach out to you. You can find me almost everywhere. You can call me 888-362-1214. Um, My direct extension, by the way, is 1003. Wow. Shoot me an email at adaster at lifeplansllc.com. But for your audience, you know what? Just connect with me on Facebook. Connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram. 
you'll find me there, Andy Daster. I, uh, by the way, sometimes you'll see my professional designations after, so you might see Andy Daster, CLU, CFP, but it's, there's only one, as far as I know, there's only one Andy Daster in the entire insurance industry, so it ain't going to be that hard to find me. That's right. You want to run faster? Contact Andy Daster. Ah. <laughs> you like that? I do really like that. I like it. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate you being on. Unbelievable job. You you are doing and you are leading from the front and you are focused on helping people. And it truly means a lot that you spent some time with me today. So thank you. Hey, thanks, buddy. It was fun. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank, and also, thank you guys for watching. Want to run faster? Contact Andy Daster. See you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Who's here because you want to change the game for you in 2021? And you want life to get really good in 2021. You want your income to go up in 2021. You want to help a lot of people in 2021. And you want to look back and say, dude, 2021 